Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Marley. If you're new here, welcome. So about this time of year, pre-meds are trying to plan out, you know, when they're going to take the MCAT, how they're going to prepare for the MCAT, which is a big deal. MCAT's a big test. And one of the questions that most pre-meds ask during this time is, should I do a prep course? And some people are like diehard, say, yes, for sure, you should do a prep course. And then there are other people that say it's not really necessary to get a great score. So how do you decide? Well, I've put together a simple algorithm that will help break down this question and help pre-meds decide which way to go for their MCAT prep. Let's get to it then. So first question in this algorithm to answer, and by the way, all these questions, yes or no answers here. First question is, do you love structure and or being given a schedule to follow. If you say yes to this question, yes, I love structure. Yes, I love following schedules given to me. Then the next question for you is, do you have two to $10,000 available to you to spend? And if you say yes to that question as well, go ahead and take a pick of whatever prep course is out there, whichever one you think will be right for you. But if you say no, you don't have two to $10,000 laying around to use, go ahead and buy MCAT or you know study prep books or in resources, question banks, as needed. You can get them from friends, you can get them, um, you know, eBay and stuff. There's plenty of places to get them for, you know, not full price. You can also make or find a real, you know, hardcore study group of people to help keep you accountable. There are also plenty of uh, structures and schedules online that you can look at and see if any of those might work for you. It requires a little bit more digging, but those are definitely options as well for people who want structure, but don't necessarily have thousands laying around to devote to a prep course. Or also consider looking into, there's this website, it's called mcatselfprep.com, I believe. They've gained a pretty good reputation and have customizable MCAT prep plans starting literally as low as $10. It's real. I did say 10, not 10,000. 10. And then their next one is like a hundred bucks. And then their most expensive one is a thousand, I think. The downside is that not a whole lot of outside Reese's, Reese's? I love Reese's. Now the downside to this is that you don't have a lot of outside resources integrated into this uh, program. So you have to like go out, for example, if you wanted the AMC practice bundle, you would separately have to go and buy that. But otherwise, if you want, if you like structure and don't necessarily have a ton of cash laying around to use on a prep course, it's worth a shot. Okay, so rewind. What if you answered no to the first question? The first question, remember, being do you love structure and or you know having a schedule given to you to follow? So if you answered no, no, you like to learn more like at your own pace, then the next question you should ask yourself is, are you disciplined enough, i.e. can you sit down and make yourself study for six to eight plus hours at a time? If you can answer with a solid yes to this question, then the next thing to ask yourself is, are there significant gaps in your knowledge about MCAT subjects? and material. Like maybe you're a chemistry queen, but you know, social sciences, not so much. Maybe you took a lot of your like relevant undergrad classes like a few years ago and you don't really remember much of like biochem or physics. If you do happen to have significant gaps in your MCAT subject knowledge, but you also don't necessarily want the rigid structure of like a traditional prep course, then I would seriously consider looking at some of the more self-paced MCAT prep courses out there, like the ones offered by Curve Setter, um, MCAT Self Prep again, also Princeton Review. And I'm sure there are others. Those are just ones I can think of off the top of my head. And I would recommend this just to make sure that you cover all the material and so that you have greater access to the support and or tutoring resources, but you can still set your own schedule. Now back up one step. Remember the question was, are there significant knowledge gaps? Now, if you answered no, if you're like, you know, this is, this material is pretty fresh for me. I am going straight, I'm in school and I've been taking all these classes to prep for the MCAT. If you feel pretty strong on most or all of the MCAT related subjects, that's awesome. Do your thing. If you feel confident in your ability to set and stick to your own study schedule, and you don't feel like you have really major knowledge gaps at all, just kind of like filling in small blanks here and there, you're in a really good position. You're in a good spot to, you know, a base, a good foundation to self-study from. So go ahead and pick, you know, handpick the resources that you think you need to be able to fill in any blanks. The question banks, of course, are always helpful. And also consider doing a self-paced prep course if you think that it would be complementary and helpful in conjunction with your study strategy. All right, now let's think back. The first question was, do you like structure and having been given a schedule to follow? If you answered no to this, you said, no, I like to self-study, I like to set my own pace. Okay, cool. And then the next question was, okay, but are you disciplined enough to 
sit and study, make yourself study for six to eight hours a day? If you answered no to that question, or if you were hesitant, to say yes. I hate to say it, it's a little bit of a tough love kind of vibe here, but if you can't make yourself study for at least six hours a day consistently, not only will you struggle to study for and take the seven hour MCAT, but you'll have a difficult time in med school because of the amount of studying that's required. Most students I know study nine to 10 hours a day on average, you know, sometimes more, sometimes less, but that seems to be about the average. So I'm not saying like you have to reevaluate your life choices here. If you don't think that you can right now sit down and crank out six to seven hours of studying, find ways to work up to it. Uh, because if you plan on going to med school, if you plan on taking the MCAT, which is a long test, and then going to med school, which requires hours and hours and hours of studying every day, then you really have to build that stamina up. Don't take it as like saying like, oh, I can't do medicine. Like, yes, you can. You just have to figure out a way that works for you to be able to get that amount of studying in because it is necessary. So there you have it. It's a pretty simple algorithm that can help pre-meds choose the MCAT prep course option or study option that'll work best for them. If this video was helpful, let me know by hitting the like button down below, commenting, subscribe if you haven't already as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have an awesome rest of your day and catch you next week.